All right, you guys, this is going to be your review of Boomerang Season 2, Episode 4, I believe we're on. Please go, 3, Episode 3. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hope you like this video. So, we pick, this episode focuses mainly on Tia and David. Okay, so we have Tia. She got this gig at the strip club, honey. She comes in on a chariot, makeup, beat, face beat for the gods. You know, remember that's when she used to strip. So now she's doing these high high paying gigs at the strip club. They, she was getting paid $10,000 for one dance, honey, at the strip club, plus tips, okay? And, you know, she did her little dance and she did her little thing and all that good stuff. And, um, when it was over with, of course, she's, her and, um, Simone have a moment because she pays, you know, Simone goes to pay her, and she was like, this ain't $10,000. Simone was like, minus expenses, minus my 10%. Like, you good. My thing is, she was complaining about not getting her full money, and in my mind, I'm thinking, you got enough tips to make up whatever Simone took out that 10 sacks. You you should have made up in your tips, but okay. Um, this review ain't going to be long, y'all. So then... um. We see her backstage with the other strippers, and in her mind, like, this is my family. Like, this way I started. I started at the strip club, and she goes to ask one of them for some makeup and a makeup wipe or whatever, and they ain't, you know, ain't nobody trying to hook her up. And she's like, what's good? Like, you know, I came from here. This is where I came from. They were like, yeah, but you didn't stay. And, you know, they proceed to basically break it down for her. Like, you probably got more money to, you probably got more money for that one dance than we make all night. Don't come in here acting like you one of us. Don't come in here acting like you still down and you and you not. Like you, you know what I'm saying? Like you come in here, you you she said, but I bring in a crowd. So you make money off of me because now the house is packed and they giving up money. They were like, Don't come in here with that Reaganomics trickle down shit. The shit don't trickle down. Like it don't trickle down to us. Like like you know what I'm saying? Like that ain't how it works. They give you your tips, they come and see you, and then they keep it moving. And um Tia feels some kind of way, you know what I'm saying? She gets in her feelings a little bit, and she feels some kind of way, and she basically takes it out on Simone, and Simone is like, look, you're tripping. Simone said, you were complaining, I got an opportunity for you to make up that money, you could, you know, I got you a couple of photo ops, they're going to pay you $1,000 for the picture, and she don't want to do it, and she was like, look, you said you wanted to make up the money, like, that's how you're going to make up, you know, recoup that 10% that I took, and she's like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to take the picture. So Simone is like, you're tripping. Is it something you want to talk about? And she was like, no, I don't have nothing to say. She said, okay, well, I'm going to go home. You call me. That's when you know that people are real friends, you know. And we see Tia peeping this one dancer. And I will say that that girl was dancing, okay? She was getting it in. She was dancing. And Tia was kind of giving her the eye, and she was giving Tia the eye, and they were kind of making eye contact, you know, all that good stuff. I said, oh, oh. Tia on the prowl, honey. Tia on the prowl. So, later on, she's sitting there. She she moping. She got her little drink. Like I said, Simone done left her. She's still at the club. She moping a little bit. And the lady, the other stripper says, you left the rest of your stuff in the back. She was like, so what? She said, so what? You might want to go get it for it come up missing. So, Mia goes back there. I mean, Tia goes back there to get um, the rest of her stuff. And she sees the, the girl she had been kind of, you know, giving the eye to. And, um... Her ankle is sore. And she was like, girl, you need to go get that checked out. She was like, uh, you know they ain't giving us no time off, like, for all of that. She was like, yeah, but your ankle is bad. You really need to go get that checked out. She said, you know, you ain't got no damn insurance. She said, at the end of the day, you know, when y'all come through, when we have these superstar dancers come through, they roll out the red carpet for y'all, whereas when it's us, they don't even vacuum the damn carpet. She was like, so, you know, it's basically, once again, they had another conversation about how, you know how bad things are. They were like, you know, the owners make money, the promoters make money, and we're here picking up scraps. You know, people think we really got it going on. We're picking up the scraps of what everybody else is making. So, come to find out the girl's name is Dorothy. And so they saw Dog and Dorothy. She said, my mother was a fan of the Golden Girls. Tia going to say, Dorothy was the worst one. I said, see, you're going to back up off of Dorothy because Dorothy was actually my favorite. You're going to back up off of Dorothy, Okay. But then she said, well, you know, and Dorothy was, you know, she was gay anyway. And so the the, the girl going to be like, and what's wrong with that? And y'all know Tia was like, nothing, girl. So that's where that, that's where that ended. So now we have David, okay? Remember, David is having a crisis of, of faith. He really, he, he was really 
you trying to deal with, um, you know, the marriage breaking up, and then he had the little situation last season where he slept with the girl, and he's questioning his faith and how dedicated he really is to his faith. So he ends up going to um, Jaleel White's church, and of course he has this very non-traditional church. You know, it's the mega church. He's up on stage in sneakers and jeans, and he got the the mouthpiece, the wireless mic, and who keeps texting me? He's got the wireless mic, and he's like, um, um, and he's like, um, you know, they gone paperless. There ain't no Bibles in the church, honey. If you ain't got a tablet and don't have an electronic Bible, honey, you short. And girl sits next to him, and, you know, she's cool, and they're kind of, you know, she's sharing her tablet with him. And Jaleel White does this whole sermon about Job. And how God tested Job and how everybody gave Job a hard time. Even he was like, even his own wife was tripping on my brother, right? Like he's doing that whole I'm hip, I'm young thing, you know. Um, like they have praise dances to crunk music. Like it's one of them churches, you know what I'm saying? And at one point, the boys call him Ari and, um, and, and By Bison's call him. They drunk, talking about some it's Taco Tuesday. He was like, it is Sunday and I'm at church. How's it going to be Sunday when it's Taco Tuesday? He was like, they were like, come on down here. And he was like, first of all, y'all didn't invite me. He was like, y'all are drunk, right? Y'all need a ride. And they were kind of like, you know. So they really only called him because they couldn't get home. He was like, I'll get y'all a, a lift. But that just goes to show that relationship. So he goes back into the church. And like I said, Jaleel White is, is preaching on this whole Joe person. He said, well, I was at the party the other night, you know, doing what I do, having a good time. He said, and I ran into Joe. He said, and he proceeds to talk about Job and his challenges and stuff. He said, and he's right here, David. He's right here. David, come up here and tell him your story. And so he gets up and he testifies about, you know, the crisis of conscience that, the, that he's having and how he's questioning his faith and questioning, you know, kind of what God is, what's going on with him. And, you know, he feels good and all that good stuff. So when it's over with, you know, he's still hanging around. And um, a couple of the guys come up to him, and they're like, yo, we really, you know, that was your testimony really spoke to us. He was like, you want to go out and, you know, get some lunch? And he looks up, and the whole crew mimics his crew. Like, there's somebody that looks like Ari. He's got the braids. There's somebody that looks like Simone. Somebody looks like Crystal. Like, the whole crew. And so, you know, he was like, why don't you come, you know, why don't you come through? And he was like, um, no, maybe another time. So then him and Jalil end up having a conversation and you know Jaleel White is drinking and he's like yo man he's like look as you can see we do things a little different around here you know um but I would love for you to hang out I'd love for you to stay with us he said but you know you're gonna have to lighten up on that message a little bit you was a little heavy you know at one point he's saying you might need to work on your your, your shoe game you know we we you know we that's not how we roll around here you know because he's sitting there in some Jordans and stuff so then as he's leaving, he runs into the lady who he was sitting next to, and they kind of joke around a little bit. And she says, you know, it was really nice meeting you, and, you know, hopefully I'll see you again sooner rather than later. So that was kind of like a little vibe there. And the next thing you know, we see him down to the shoe store, honey, buying him some new sneakers. So I said, okay, I see you, David. Now, I don't want you to get so caught up. Now, this man didn't already showed you who he is. He didn't already showed you he ain't perfect. He back there drinking alcohol and telling you to fix your message and all that. So don't go in there trying to change things the way they do it. You see, they are a non-traditional situation, and that works for a lot of people, so don't, don't be questioning stuff now. So anyway, that was Boomerang. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Peace.